Today, we're talking about Kiwi, a brand new co-op puzzler for two players. Ever since we got our hands on the demo, we have been anxiously awaiting the release. So let's find out if it lived up to the hype. Welcome to The Co-op Company, where we help you find the best co-op games. So make sure to subscribe. Kiwi has you playing as two adorable Kiwi birds named Jeff and Debra. You have just been hired to work at the bungalow base in Telepost. You will spend your time shipping out packages, typing telegrams, delivering letters, and much more. We thoroughly enjoyed Kiwi from a gameplay standpoint. However, about halfway through the game, we ran into something that left us feeling uncomfortable. Because of that, we did not finish the game and might not recommend it for some families. So stick around to learn why. As flightless birds with no hands, you have to find different ways to perform tasks throughout the game. This includes carrying things with your beak and butt slamming buttons. Every level in the game revolves around four areas of the telepost, each with its own unique type of puzzle. All of the many levels follow a similar puzzle layout as one of these base areas. While the objective for each level remains the same, there are additions and challenges that slightly change the way you accomplish your goal as you progress through the year. For example, in the summertime, the telepost was overcome by a sandstorm, and we had to continuously hop to avoid being sucked down into the sand. In fall, we experienced Halloween-themed levels, as well as some major flooding in the basement that left us solving similar puzzles to the ones as before, but with the twist of everything being in the water. We actually really enjoyed that the levels followed the same design, as it made understanding what we needed to do far easier than learning a brand new puzzle every time. The game is funny and cute almost all the time. Every level begins with an amusing paragraph about the task that you'll be performing and what led up to it. Whether it has to do with male flies that will be wreaking havoc around the place, or the overgrown plants that will push buttons at exactly the wrong time. The developers did a really good job of adding new tasks and challenges that kept us on our toes and awaiting what we would find next. With only the four base levels, you might think that they would run out of things to change but each time we enjoyed the changes that they made. The majority of the puzzles require more communication and delegation than actual forced cooperation. Like splitting the keyboard so you both have half of it to work with. While most of the tasks don't really require two people, it is more enjoyable and far more efficient to delegate tasks properly. We often would split the level in half with both of us working on different puzzle pieces. However, this is not to say that you do not need to work together. There are plenty of times when you will need to perform certain actions at the same time, or you both have things only you can do. However, for the most part, the game does not force you to work together, but instead provides plenty of opportunity for coordinating to make things more efficient. While you can play solo, we highly recommend playing with a friend. Kiwi supports both local and online co-op. Every level has an optional short text tutorial describing the things that have been changed or added. These were helpful while being short and sweet. The controls are very simple and easy to learn, with only a few actions to perform. On top of that, the proper button to press will pop up on screen in case you have forgotten. Finally, we can talk about the experience that led us to the point of not finishing the game, despite how much fun we were having leading up to this point. As we came to the close of fall, we were playing through Halloween, and the last level required us to use a Ouija board to find postal codes. While this may seem innocent and harmless to many, it was a big deal for us as a family-friendly channel. We did not feel like this belonged in an otherwise family-friendly co-op game. Therefore, we did not continue to play past this level. We wish that it had not been included, or that we could have had the option to skip it. As far as we can tell, the game should take about 5-6 to six hours to complete. If you're into 100%ing your games, there should be a decent amount of replay value. There are loads of collectibles, a good chunk of minigames, and completing a level with gold could take some time, as we only got one gold in our entire playthrough. We really enjoyed the half of Kiwi that we played. We never really felt confused, and we always knew what sort of task we needed to perform. The music and art were both done really well and made the game a blast to play. However, we were disappointed to find the Ouija board in what seemed to be a very family-friendly game. This small fact turned us away from the game and kept us from recommending it to our family and friends. However, if you do not care about the Ouija board, then be our guest and grab this otherwise fantastic co-op game. As always, we've linked it in the description for your convenience. To see more co-op reviews, click on that playlist now. And make sure to subscribe to stay updated about the best co-op games. We will see you later.